We are just one week away from the next round of debates in the Democratic primary. Like the first round, the candidates are going to take the stage on two different days. But are Americans even interested? According to a report by Axios, interest in the Democratic primary plunged last week. Huh. Articles about the candidates generate roughly 6.5 million social media interactions while stories about President Trump generated 23.2 million. Joining us now with his insight on the debates, the 2020 general election, the president's feud with the squad is the co-founder of Justice Democrats, Kyle Kalinske. He's the host and producer of the Kyle Kalinske Show. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Kyle, I think right off the bat, what I want to get to is about your thoughts on the Democratic Party, this race right now, and really regarding Bernie Sanders. His political obituary has been written a million times. They say that he's fallen to fifth or sixth or whatever. But to me and to Crystal, I mean, he seems like behind Joe Biden, the forebearer in the Democratic primary. Just tell us about the treatment of Bernie Sanders and how you think his campaign stands right now. Well, I mean, he's been treated terribly by the media. That goes without saying. But I think we're, have, we're gonna see potentially a weird backlash effect in that almost kind of like Trump in 2016, the more you had establishment outlets coming after him, the more you saw him go up in the polls. And I think a similar thing like that happens with Bernie because oftentimes the attacks against him are so vacuous and there's just nothing there. And it makes people, even people who are ambivalent about Bernie go, mm, well, that really doesn't sound quite right. That wasn't quite mm -hmm. fair. I'm not sure what you're saying there. And a good example of that was just recently on MSNBC when uh, somebody called him anti-woman and quite literally said, well, I don't know why I think he is, but I just think he is. And yeah. of course, yeah, when, you, <laughs> when you go to his voting record, it's like the most pro-woman in all of Washington, D.C. So when you say something like that, even people who are on the fence about Bernie are kind of forced to go, I don't know, that seems like you're reaching a little bit. So um, even though it's terrible to watch the media treat Bernie terribly, it actually might end up helping him. And I would advise him to just kind of lean into it a little bit. And, you know, don't shy away from taking on bad actors who are treating you unfairly. You know, I was just talking about this yesterday, too. And I completely agree with that sort of strategic advice. I mean, the Sanders camp has done an excellent job of building their own media ecosystem, which I think is essential in this landscape and especially for taking on Trump. But some of his best moments were when he was like taking it right to the mainstream media. I think his Fox News town hall, which was somewhat controversial, was really one of his best media moments. And people really responded pos positively to that because he's good at going in and calling people out and just being himself. Yeah, Bernie, in my opinion, he's at his best when he's an angry old man, because we all relate to that. People relate to that. And, it, you know, it makes sense that we relate to it because we live in a country where there's one point six trillion dollars in student loan debt. We live in a country where 30 to 40 million Americans don't have health insurance and 30 to 45 thousand Americans die every year because they don't have access to basic health care. We live in a country where half of workers make thirty thousand dollars a year or less. So people are mad, people are angry, and we want somebody to reflect that, to reflect the dire situation that we're in. And he, by far and away, is the most like that. And, you know, I, I would say even in the debates and when he's dealing with the media, it's okay, man. Like, when he treats the media with derision and when he treats the other candidates, like, and he scorns and scolds the other candidates, that's a positive thing because, yes, it's ridiculous that we're having this discussion in the year 2019, like really, we're still debating Medicare for all as if every other country doesn't have one version or another of a single payer system. We have the answers to a lot of these questions. And sometimes he feels like he's in the twilight zone when everybody around him is like, mm. no, you're wrong, even though you're obviously factually correct. So, Kyle, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One thing I want to get at to you, I, I ask every progressive that comes on this show, Eka, uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren is branded her version as economic patriotism. She says, we're gonna you know, revamp trade deals, wages, go, we're gonna fundamentally reinvent the system, but kind of within the system. Bernie says, no, we're going to have a complete and total political revolution. What is it about that revolution that it makes it more enticing to you than an economic patriotism? Or does it make it more enticing to you? What do you think? Well, it's actually interesting because mm. in my opinion, strategically, you need to do what Bernie is doing to actually get change within the system. Yeah. So what, what Elizabeth Warren is doing is she's calling for that change within the system, but you already watered down your position. You already, you know, conceded and, and did a half measure up front and, you know, told everybody, 
hey, I'm the person who's going to color within the lines here. Whereas Bernie is coming in strong and saying, no, 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 we need a political revolution. You know, we need top down change of everything. And when you do that, that's how you get change. Because, it, you know, a good example of this is Obama and Obamacare. When they started that health care negotiation, they, they went in meekly asking for a public option. And then guess what? The final result was the individual mandate system, which was birthed by the Heritage Foundation, which fundamentally is a conservative plan. So, you know, the crowning accomplishment of the last Democratic president was a right wing health care plan. Now, mm -hmm. it was better than nothing, but it, you know, that this is not what the left wants. This is not what the American people wants, according to the polls. Yeah. So you have to fight. You have to overreach in order to get anything done. And Bernie's the only candidate who's even remotely serious about that. Mm -hmm. What do you make of, you've got all these, uh, you know, all these different variations on the Medicare for all theme out there now. There's like Medicare for those who want it. And I think Cap <laughs> just came out with Medicare extra, whatever that is. What do you make of this? Uh, very simply, I'll say this. Gaslighting to protect the health insurance industry and big pharma. That's <laughs> all the other options are. That's it. There's Medicare for all or there's nothing. You know, if you want to have a conversation about the kind of single payer system we have, that's a reasonable conversation. You could say, hey, let's do a UK style system where it's public funding. So taxpayer money going to public institutions. That's one way to do it. Or you could say we could do the Canadian style system or the French style system where you have public funding of private institutions. But there's still that single payer being the government. And explain that, um, Explain why that principle is so important. Why? Because this is something that, you know, the debate moderators last time really wanted to get all the candidates on the record on the idea of will you keep the private insurance system or will you get rid of the private insurance system? Why does that matter so much? Well, actually, it doesn't even really matter that much because Bernie Sanders bill allows for supplemental private health insurance. So it doesn't like fully ban private health insurance. But what it does say is we're going to have the default be that health care is a right in this country. And that's what you get with a single payer system. You don't have to you don't have to pay a rapacious mafia like for profit middleman to, to get the care that you need. So really, with the Medicare for all system, particularly the kind Bernie's pushing for, he says, hey, listen, if you want something that goes above and beyond what's covered, and by the way, everything is covered, but if you want something like plastic surgery, for example, you know, well, then sure, you can get some sort of private health insurance and, and do it that way. But the default is going to be everybody's covered, full stop, and it saves money like every other developed country in the world. Kyle, another thing I want to get at with you is about the topic of immigration. I know it's something you talk about. And I, something that, look, I'm a conservative, and the way I look at it is is that shooting your, it's, uh, but I'm also an economic populist, and I look at this and I say, I think it's shooting yourself in the foot in order to embrace some of the immigration policies that we saw on the stage, particularly health insurance for illegal immigrants and decriminalize, decriminalizing crossing the border. Does the immigration stances of some of the progressives uh, concern you about their electoral chances in the future? Well, maybe some of their rhetoric does, but when you actually look at the policies they're proposing, it's not what they're making it sound like. So when they say decriminalize border crossings, that's not totally true because I think the, the person who was leading on that was Julian Castro. And when he goes into detail, he talks about how, no, I just want to change a border crossing from a misdemeanor to a civil offense. And the reason why he wants to change it to a civil offense is that we could stop the breakup of families at the border. Right. Full stop. So when you hear it explained like that, it actually makes a lot of sense. However, to your initial point, uh -huh. yeah, I would advise the Democrats, this is not something you lead with in the conversation because this is not something that wins elections. Now, we could have a conversation about um, morally, what's the correct answer? Ethically, what's the correct answer? Um, what should the unified position of the Democratic Party be on immigration? Um, but yes, you would always want to stress in these debates and in these conversations that we're talking about giving... Um, all Americans health care and whenever the right tries to straw man like oh, you're just you just want to give illegal immigrants free health care Well, the response is we want to give Americans free health care, too And the right doesn't even want to give Americans free health care. So really this is the conversation that we're having mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's such a good point, but I think it also underscores why it's so important that healthcare truly be universal because I think people would rightly be outraged if you put undocumented immigrants in line ahead of any Americans in terms of getting um, decent healthcare coverage. Um, we've got more for you, Kyle. If you can stick around for a couple minutes, we've stay just got to stop down really quick and then we'll be back with more from Kyle.